Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you a basic website layout using HTML and CSS. All right, let's begin. So we should know what semantic tags are. Semantic tags, they include, but are not limited to, headers, nav elements, main, section, aside, articles, and footers. You'll want to use semantic tags because they keep your content organized, they're better for search engine optimization, and they assist with screen readers and other technology for accessibility. So I've already written some HTML markup. I just want to describe this first. Headers are used for introductory content, such as a title, a logo, or author information. Nav elements, they're used for navigation bars or other links. Sometimes you may find a set of navigation links at the bottom of your page, but having a navigation bar is fairly common. Now the main content, which is all of this, it can contain one of many sub elements, such as sections, aside elements, articles, and generic developments. So sections, which is what I've created here in the middle, this is for dependent content. You would typically put anything you want within a section. It's typically used for dependent content. If I were to take this section out of the web page, then put it on another web page, it might not necessarily make sense. Like, what is it for? That's why it's dependent. And a side element is meant for side content. This can include author information, fun facts, quotes, external links, comments, or really any other related content that's related to a section. Now, an article, this represents independent content. This could include news articles, job posts, or blog posts. Articles are really similar to sections. With articles, it's meant for independent content. For example, a news article. If I were to take this news article, cut it out, and put it on a different website, it would still make sense. It's independent content. It's not reliant on the context of the website, whereas in a section would be. And then lastly, we have footers. A footer is for closing content. This could include author information, copyright information, and sometimes navigational links. There's really no one-size-fits-all approach. Really, the design is up to you, but this is a really common format. Now that we know the basics, let's actually design this. All right, so we will create our semantic elements. We have a header, a nav element, a main element, and a footer element. Within our header element, let's just add an h2 element that says header. So let's go to our style sheet. I'll take our header element Let's change the background color. Background dash color. Let's pick a light gray color. I'll use HSL values because I like them. 84 or 85 is good. Then let's text align center. And add a little bit of padding. 25 pixels. Okay, let's work on our navigation bar. It's not going to be a fully functioning navigation bar. We've done that in a previous video. Let's just allocate some space for a navigation bar. It is common to have more than one navigation element per web page. If we're creating a navigation bar, we should set the class to be something like navbar. So it's descriptive. Let's go to our CSS style sheet. I will select our navbar class, then change the background color. Let's go with the darker color. I'll add some height, height 50 pixels, and that should be good. We're just allocating some space. We're not creating a full navigation bar. There's a little bit of margin around the body of our document. I'm going to remove that by selecting our body element, then set the margin to be zero or zero pixels. That should get rid of the margin. All right, then we have our main element. Our main element can include any combination of a side, sections, articles, or even just some generic div elements. But we won't be working with div in this video. Really, you can see any combination of a side, section, article, or div. Or maybe even none of them. It's up to you. In this topic, we'll stick with one aside element one section, and one article. These elements are kind of like sub-elements within our main element. Our main element is going to be the main steak and potatoes of our web page. So with our aside element, I'll include an h2 element for a header. 
This is a side. Let's do the same thing for section. This is a section. Then this is an article. Let me separate these just so that they're easier to see. Just to take up some space, I'm going to create some sample paragraphs. Our side element will have one. Our section will have two paragraphs. I'm just copying and pasting. And our article will have two as well. I don't want this top to bottom layout. We can change that with some CSS properties. So let's work on our aside element first. With our aside element, I'll set the width to be 20% of the width of the web page. Our aside element only takes up 20% of the space available. The following elements can float. We have to set the float property to be left then in this case. All right, let's copy aside. Change a side to be section. That's our next element. I'll set the width to be 40%. Then we have article. Change section to article. And the width will stay at 40%. These three elements can all fit within the web page. The total width is under 100%. We have our three elements within our main element. So if you would like to add a little bit of padding, this is what you're going to do. Let's add 10 pixels of padding to each of these elements. When we calculate the width, we don't take into account any padding. So one change we're going to make is that at the top of our CSS style sheet, we can select all elements with an asterisk, then a set of curly braces. We will set the box sizing property to border dash box. What we're doing with this property is that when we calculate the width, factor in the padding. All three elements should be lined up now. All right, then lastly, we have our footer. So within our footer element, I'll just add an H2 element that says footer. Then I will style it. Uh, let's copy what we have for our header. Paste it. Change header to be footer. Now what we need to do is clear our float because we're still floating the elements that come after. Let's display our footer as a block level element. To clear a float, you can set clear, then both. And that should clear that. All right, so here is a basic website layout for a desktop. This isn't a good format for a mobile device, though. With a mobile device, you would want each of these elements to be on top of each other so you can scroll down. We can add an at rule. So at media screen and max width 600 pixels. So what we're doing here is that if the width of our screen or window is 600 pixels or below, we can change some CSS properties. With a side section and article, let's select those. A side, comma, section, comma, article. We'll just change the width to be 100%. If a user is on a mobile device and or the width is 600 pixels or below, then we'll switch to a mobile version of the web page. Each of these elements, our side section and article elements, are taking up 100% of the width available. Then if we were to expand this web page, or we're viewing on a desktop, we switch to the desktop version. This is also known as responsive CSS. All right, everybody, I know I covered a lot today, but that is a basic website layout using HTML and CSS.